Well, hello, folks. It's been a while since I made my last video. Uh, nice to, to be making another one. Let's see, I've, I've made some progress on my beard in the interim. Still doing a bit of experimentation with it, but I think it's coming along quite nicely. <laughs> so today I thought I would do kind of a special, a special, uh, I guess, tribute video, for lack of a better word, um, just and show you some straight up comic books, right? I, I think this will be my first video where the main objective is just to show you a little run of comics. Um, and today I'm doing this in honor of my man, Jack Davis. So today's July 27th, right? So um, Jack Davis passed away at age 91, I believe, two years ago to this day, right? July 27th, 2016 in St. Simons, Georgia. And that's where he's laid to rest. So some of the other online communities I participate in, uh, we, we've been sort of memorializing him uh, a bit on this two year anniversary of his passing. So I just had an idea to shoot a quick video and show you uh, what I consider to be one of the all time classic mini runs within a run in EC Comics. And that is the Jack Davis cover run in Tales from the Crypt. So, not gonna do a whole lot of talking. It's just gonna be mostly about showing some comic books. So, you know, Jack uh, did some work inside the pages of Tales from the Crypt before he started doing covers. His first cover assignment in Tales from the Crypt was issue number 29. So here's my copy of issue number 29. Uh, it's a nice uh, upper mid-grade copy. So this was his first cover assignment, Tales from the Crypt. And then basically, it was so awesome. He did every cover on Tales from the Crypt until the, the series concluded with issue 46. So starting with number 29. And the reason I took this one out of the bag is because... Let me open it up and show you the show you the interior. So there's like a nice little featurette in here uh, about Jack Davis, appropriate because this was his his initial cover assignment in Tales from the Crypt. So just I love if you if you have watched uh, one of my earlier videos and it's easy to find because I haven't made that many videos. I talk about uh, you know in my collecting backstory, Jack Davis holds a special place in that story. So. Jack is the man. So, issue 29, and here we go. Mostly, like I say, it's just going to be showing you some comics. I may make a few comments here or there, but let me, let me get this one back in its bag. All right, issue number 30. Another, another beauty. One of the sort of... He did several underwater covers. We'll see them uh, in, this, in this series. This is his first one. Just an awesome, I mean, I'm going to stop saying they're awesome because then you would hear me say awesome like on every every book. They're all just incredible. Here's my issue number 30. Again, a nice, a nice upper mid-grade copy there. I bought a lot of these books uh, straight from another collector friend of mine. Um, Let's see. Oh, I do. I do have a combination here of raw books and slabs. So let me let me get myself together. Issue number thirty-one. Uh, the first CGC graded book I'll show you. Nice, nice copy. Uh, it's in the the fancy new CGC slab. Looks quite nice. Feels quite nice in hand. I must say. Right. This this poor guy right here uh, is is in for it. Hmm. Gruesome. All right. Let me, let me see here how I want to organize this. All right, where are we? Number 32. This is one of my favorites right here. Number 32, I'm, I'm glancing at some notes just to say, just to double check, is there anything in particular I need to tell you about one of these issues of mine? But this is a, a really nice copy of, of number 32. Um, one, of the, one of the most overlooked details that I think are just, is just really cool, it's easy to focus on the damsel in distress right? But look at these clowns. I mean, Jack did not shortchange us in terms of putting details into his drawings, right? These clowns back here are just petrified about this, this girl about to get squished by this elephant. So, killer. Number 33, um, many of you will recognize this, right? This, this book, um, 
has a has a very important origin story in it. So this is a a really nice kind of mid grade copy. Uh, this this copy is interesting. I bought this copy uh, from a guy named Mike Benton, who uh, has some history uh, has whole sort of important history in the hobby. He uh, was a was an author. I don't think he writes much anymore, but. Back in the day, I guess 70s or 80s, don't quote me on the dates, but he wrote a series of, of books. He had like a horror, uh, history of horror comics, history of science fiction, like a whole series. And he did some other books, Mike Benton. So it was really cool to get his copy of uh, number 33, right? Origin of the Crypt Keeper. 34. 34 is another awesome damsel in distress cover by jack right uh frankensteinian kind of creature there right uh wax museum setting really nice beautiful 35 this is a this is a, a book that i repatriated from a collecting buddy of mine in england right nice werewolf cover Number 35, nothing else in particular for me to kind of tell you about my copy of this issue. Just a nice, solid, mid-grade copy. 36. Same story here. Uh, I like this particular copy of this issue. So one of, one of my things when I look for copies that I like of a particular book, I like to look at uh, what's going on on the leading edge in terms of how much art do, do, does this issue contain, right? Where's the cutoff? It's really hard to find a, a copy of issue number 36 where the, the edge isn't cutting into this Ray Bradbury box or into the T on Crypt. So this is a, this is a beautifully centered copy. Uh, some of you would appreciate that, right? Dr. Von Schilla, Nick, right? Nicely centered, tough to find on this particular issue. That brings us to 37. Just another just gruesome, you know, thing coming out of a tomb about to give some guy the business, right? This is just a, a nice uh, de-slab. So I've been known to, to de-slab books on occasion, right? I did a video showing you about that. This is one, this is an XCGC slab that I, that I liberated. Uh, awesome book. 37, you see, 38, another book I repatriated from my buddy in England, right? Number 38, nice mid-grade copy. This is a, an interesting issue in that it's, a, it's, a, it's one of EC's uh, couple um, of covers that they censored. So this is a censored cover. Uh, the original art for this particular cover showed the woman, there was a woman in this coffin, her head was hanging out and blood and, and brains and stuff were kind of splattering everywhere as this guy brought the ax down. And I guess, you know, this is when the, the, uh, the, the, the censors were bringing the heat down on EC and EC for whatever reason decided they would go ahead and self-censor this cover. Uh, and they, they basically removed the gruesome, it actually wasn't that bad, the, the actual woman's head being splattered. Uh, you can find the original art representation of this cover in a couple different places out there. Uh, so if you're interested, you can Google it and find that. But uh, just like the, there's a woman right down here. Cool. Number 39. Okay, 39. Another, I think I would call this also a werewolf, a werewolf cover. Sorry about the glare. I'm trying to work it so it minimizes the glare. Um, so the interesting thing about this particular copy, this comes from the Gary Arlington collection. So Gary Arlington is, a uh, you know, holds, holds an important place in the history of the development of the hobby. He, he started one of the first, I think, comic shops. Don't quote me on the year, early seventies, late sixties, early seventies in California. And one of his main collecting passions personally was EC comics. Uh, you may have noticed sometimes a lot of his books come to market and get marketed as such, you know, from the Gary Arlington collection. So it's, it's cool to have one of his books. So 
I've got several. This is one of them from uh, from used to be in, in the collection of Gary Arlington. Pretty cool. I love that kind of stuff. I love books where there's some sort of interesting provenance associated with them. So, nod to Gary Arlington there. All right, brings us to number 40. Number 40 is my only Gaines file copy from Tales from the Crypt. Uh, and this is a great one to have. Uh, I love this cover, one of my favorites. Just check out, just just take in the, the coloration of that cover right there. It's just killer. Love it. Uh, I am, I, I say I am, or at least I used to be a scuba diver. So I just, I love the underwater, the underwater action, right? That's just a blazer. Uh, I've got the Gaines file copy certificate comes along with it. This happened to be, there were 12, most of the time there were 12 Gaines file copies, right? This one was number five out of the 12. So really happy to have that. Not that easy these days to come up with a Gaines file copy of a Tales from the Crypt issue. And like I've mentioned before, I love my Gaines file copies to be r relatively low grade, if you can call this low grade. It is for a Gaines file copy. Makes them slightly more affordable. So this was awesome to, to grab that one. Back to the raw books, at least it's raw now. Uh, this is another one of my favorite covers. Another Damsel in Distress, number 41. Um, just a killer. I've had several copies of, uh, of this issue pass through my hands. This is my current keeper. It's a, it's a de-slabbed uh, CGC 9.0 Northford pedigree copy. Again, I love, I love provenance and I love pedigrees for that reason. It's, I feel more connected to the history of the hobby. So I love having those kind of pedigree copies. So this is from, from, this is a Northford. Awesome. Nice to have this one. 41, 42, what have I got here? Just another nice upper mid-grade copy, right? Another vampire cover, really awesome. Jack just continues tearing it up, just tearing up these covers. Number 42, number 43, again, another nice upper mid-grade. Uh, this, this is interesting. Um, Couple of interesting stories in this issue. Uh, I mean, the art, the artwork on the cover, I guess, is terrifying in its own right, but it's different from what we've been seeing, right? No monsters, no zombies. It's just a just a psychotic pilot, you know, dropping somebody out of an airplane, right? Which is is pretty terrifying, you must say, right? Forty four. Okay, forty four. Nice white pager, another CGC book. Uh, notably, this this one is from this is my this is my only Tales from the Crypt from the Don and Maggie Thompson collection, which is a, a recognized pedigree. Again, Don and Maggie Thompson. Uh, you can Google their story. They they're collectors and fanzine. Just ha have their hands all in the in the development of the hobby over many decades. Uh, so it's awesome to have one of their books uh, in the collection. I've got a couple others uh, under different titles, Mad and Panic and that kind of thing, but not easy to find one of their Tales from the Crypt books. So happy to have that one. Getting toward the end now, number 45. Just look at the colors. Look at the colors on this book. I mean, not only was Jack Davis awesome, but shout out to Marie Severin who did the coloring on most of these. Uh, just incredible choices of colors, man. Look at that. Beauty. This is another de-slabbed Northford pedigree copy. And that brings us to the, to the end. Tales from the Crypt number 46, the last issue, uh, reputed to be a little bit harder to find than some of the other issues, a little bit more scarce. Uh, I don't know whether that's actually true or not. I've had several copies, uh, and this is my this is my current keeper, right? Just another another killer werewolf cover, right? So there we go. That's my tribute to Jack, right? On this anniversary of his passing, uh, keep resting in peace, Jack. And I will be back uh, with another video sometime down the line. Thanks for watching.